three dollars between the three dollars and that it's for bills it's about data visualization libraries and our speaker Dr. Sell will be with us. He's a software engineer and author of uh, coding cool stuff in Python. Coding cool stuff in Python. Uh, before we start, I want to talk about our company, Magnemind Academy. We founded in 2015 and we've been teaching data science since 2015. We have three main type of programs, our full stack data science bootcamp, our one-on-one -on -one machine learning and uh, data analysis project mentorship bootcamp and our mini bootcamps. In our uh, full stack data science bootcamp, uh, it's focusing on the theory and the practice and the experience. And at the end of the bootcamp, the aim is to find you industry jobs in data science uh, places. In our one-on-one uh, -on -one machine learning data analysis uh, project mentorship bootcamp, uh, it's for the ones who need guidance and trying to build a portfolio. Uh, and our mini boot camps where you can learn different subtopics of data science in different modules. Right now, uh, we have our machine learning mini boot camp that we are accepting applications it's starting on February 18. And for four weeks, 12 hours, and it's for free. Uh, you can join it online. The on site participation is full right now. And uh, you can check our website to learn more about our programs. Having said that, I want to announce Dr. Purcell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first thing first. Hey, um, is, is the microphone working? I'm so far. <laughs> yeah. OK. Testing, testing, one, two, three. OK. All right. So I'm sorry. Oh. So uh, huh? OK, cool. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this event on a Friday evening. And I imagine there's uh, you guys could be doing cool stuff on a Friday. So I'll, I'll try my best to make this presentation worth your time. So um, just bear with me. I'm not feeling uh, 100%. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but I will nevertheless do my best to deliver an interesting presentation for you all. So why I care about data visualization? So for just some high level overview, you can, you can analyze various business relationships. So a company can see the quarterly reports that they're, and, and they can determine if they're trending upwards or if they're trending downwards. And another benefit is for data storytelling. So with visual analytics, we can discover new insights uh, that help us craft a narrative for the story that we're trying to tell. And you can absorb massive data a lot easier. There was a study that says that humans process data 60 times more quicker than text. So the very first plotting library that we'll go over is matplotlib. So this is a 2D data visualization library written in Python. Yes. Let's see. Yeah. I, Is 
that better or yeah. better all right okay so matplotlib is a 2d data visualization library written in python and it was created as an open source derivative to MATLAB. MATLAB is a commercial computing environment and MATPOTLIB was the open source solution to that particular commercial software. And it's one of the most popular scientific potting libraries out there. And it, it has a lot of, a, a very big API. The very first release was back in 2003. So it's a lot of legacy code in it. And that's a good thing because it has a lot of features, but it could also be a bad thing as well, because with all those features, it may be difficult to get a grasp of how to use MatPotLib. And a common complaint is that the documentation is not very, it's, the examples are on the complicated side. So what I decided to do is to illustrate various plots with matplotlib. And since we, we only have maybe an hour or so, the code examples will be very simple. And the purpose of this is so that you can get the basics of the library and you can build on top of that knowledge later on. So first thing first is how to install matplotlib. So there's two common ways to do that. You can do that by using pip, which is the, the tool that's bundled with Python when you install it, and it's the package manager. So simply pip install matplotlib. Or if you're using Anaconda, you can use conda to install matplotlib, which is conda install matplotlib. And you're going to see these two instructions a lot in this presentation because these are more or less the very basic ways that you can install various data visualization libraries in Python. So once you install matplotlib, you can test it by importing matplotlib and then by calling dunder version. A dunder in Python is just a special variable that has these, these two under, double underscores. So we can run this and as we can see, it should tell us the version of matplotlib that we're on. So in this case, the output is 3.1.1. Okay, so, so far so good. So let's learn some basic plots in matplotlib. So the very first thing is we can do a simple import matplotlib.pyplt as plt. And we don't have to include this but what this does is it makes, it makes calling the variable shorter. So this is like a, an abbreviation for a pi plot. And then to plot a simple line graph, what we can do is we can call plt.plot and then we can pass in two lists. So the first list denotes the X values and then the second list denotes the Y values. Okay, and then when we run the program, we should get this very simple plot. So that's how you create a very simple plot in matplotlib. And yeah. This is at zero x seventeen x a x two on that Oh, um, it looks like a it looks like an address that looks like a you know. Yeah. Yeah, memory address. So. It means you just got a bunch of information, but if you really needed it, you could know what it was and you don't need that. <laughs> okay. So that's how you create a very simple line pot in matplotlib. And the thing is when you, you could include pi plot. And this is a, there's, there's several different modules you can import matplotlib and you can import matplotlib.pyplt or you can import matplotlib.pylab. So matplotlib, this is the toolkit 
for Matplot. PyPlot is a module inside of Matplotlib, and it allows you to do an inter allows an interactive way to use Matplotlib. And PyLab is a, the same thing as PyPlot with some extra shortcuts, and it's not recommended to use PyPlot anymore. The 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 Pi Lab. Yeah. Okay. So in the the very first example, it was a very bare minimum um, graph. So what we can do is we can add some more functionality, right? We can add a title because some plots have a title. We can label the, the x and y axis. And we can also create a legend to describe what the data values mean and display that on the plot. So here is some updated code. So again, we import matplotlib.pyplt as plt. And then we're going to import this module as well. This is matplotlib.patches. OK, so so far, what we're doing is the same thing as before. We're just calling plt.plot, which creates the plot. We pass in the two lists to represent the x and y variable um, and y uh, portions on the graph. And then what we're doing now is we're going to add the title, the x label, and the y label on the graph. So in this case, to add a title, we do plt.title. And then we simply just pass in a string, which represents the title of the graph. And a similar concept to label the x and y axes, except we call these functions instead, the dot x label and the dot y label. And again, we pass in the string that we want to, to display on a graph. And then the very interesting thing about matplotlib is that to create a legend, there's several different ways that you can go about doing that. And some of those ways are not the most uh, obvious ways to do it. There's some, there's some issues with using certain methods. So I found this, this, this strategy pretty straightforward. This is a, a module that we can import. And then what we can do is we can call it and then we can set the color that we want to represent the various items on the legend. And then we can simply pass in what we want to represent for the legend. So when we do this and we plot the graph, we get this result right here. Question? Yeah. The difference between uh, these and I yeah, patches is a is a is a is another module in Matplotlib, and it has the PyPlot is for interactive plots. The patches is for certain type of styling type of options. So in this case, we want to style the legend, and this is something that I researched and found, and it's a pretty straightforward way to create the legend on your plot. There's another way to create the legend. There are, but to me, um, the the versions that I found were kind of buggy. There's actual, there's actually a built-in function for that, but sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't automatically include um, all the data you want. So to me, I found this strategy straightforward, but there, there are several different ways on how to do that yeah. in Matplotlib. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. So it's, it's like you wanted to move around that, um, that thing that works, right? This thing right here. Is that even possible or, or, or not? Um, you talk, talking about uh, the labels right here? No, no, no. So this thing, right? Imagine yeah, this, this legend. Like, say you wanted this does it all, does it all years to change. Oh, yeah, page. yeah. In, in the documentation, um, yeah, there's some attributes that you get passed into it. Yeah, that allow you to, yeah, arrange it on a, on a plot. OK, so here's another example. So a common critique about matplotlib is that some people don't consider it the most elegant looking <laughs> data visualization library. 
they think the graphics looks more or less kind of mundane and it's not as visual appeasing compared to some other data visualization libraries. But there are some, there are several ways in which you can actually style your matplotlib plots. So for example, we can go ahead and do the same import that we've done before. We import matplotlib.pyplt as plt. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call plt.style.use. And we can set the, the style to dark underscore background. And what this does is it makes the graph looks like this type of style. So I created a list which represents the X values. I created another list which represents the Y values. Um, I'm squaring, in this case, I'm squaring all the X values. So this is what this do right here. And then I'm gonna call plt.bar. So what this does is it allows us to plot a bar graph in matplotlib. And we can simply just pass in the X and Y values that we created right here and call plt.show to display the graph. And we get something that looks like this. Okay. So there's several built-in styles that you can use with matplotlib. So in this case, what we can do is we can print plt.style.available. And what this does is it displays all of the built-in styles that we can use for matplotlib. Because there's a way that we can create a custom CSS file and we can customize our matplotlib plots ourselves if that's what we wanna do. But if we, if we don't have the patience to get really proficient at CSS, then you may want to consider using some of these. So I'm going to just copy one of these styling types and just replace it here. So we see the, the dark background right here. So I'm just going to replace that with this. And then I'm going to run the cell. And then we're going to see how this changes. Oh, okay. So uh, that's unexpected. Let's <laughs> let's try something like this. Let's try ggplot. And let's see what we get. Okay. So that looks pretty pretty nice. Ggplot two. Um, I think this is just ggplot. But let's see if we also have a ggplot two option here. Let's double check. No. No, we don't. Yeah. So as again, we can we can test this. Um, if we don't like the default styling for matplotlib, we can quickly change how the appearance looks. Okay. So how about a scatter plot? So up until this point, we, we should see a pattern, right? With calling these graphs with matplotlib. We import matplotlib.pyplt as plt, and then we call plt.bar or plt.whatever type of graph that we want to plot. So, can anyone provide a guess if we want to plot a scatter graph? What type of, what would be the function that we use for that? Exactly. So, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm in introducing a new library called NumPy. And NumPy is a scientific computing library in Python. And to install it, you can simply use pip install NumPy. And the NumPy main data structure is called the ND array. And it's, it's optimized for performance. So compared to a typical list in Python, the ND array will give you better performance. So to plot this scatter graph, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplt as plt. And then from NumPy, I'm going to import random, which allows us to generate random values. And then in this case, I am going to call random.rn100. 
So what this does is it generates 100 random, random values. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Y value as well. And then last but not least, I am going to call the plt.scatter graph and then pass in the X and Y variables. And then when I do that, this is one type of scatter plot that I get. Any questions up until this point? Yeah. Um, yeah. What exactly is the plt dot show graphics do? Because I I remove that it, when I run it, it still show the same graph. Oh, plt dot show this yeah, right here. What does it do? Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, sh it should just display the graph. It makes the message with the memory location not appear because it's showing it on purpose as opposed to by default because you better always shows the last thing you did. You leave it out, it magically does the last thing you put in the cell, but then it also puts in that dumb message with the memory address and the angle brackets that was confusing before. Yeah, so if you were to run it in, a, in an IDE, like PyCharm or something that doesn't have like NumPy specifically integrated, you wouldn't see the graph. It would oh. just like, it would draw the graph in the yeah. background and then that show you what it is. You would end in. Okay. So what about the common out as a PLT scatter? These real crazy What what this does is it creates the, the scatter plot and we, we pass in the X and Y variables. So in this case, when we pass in an X, it, it returns a random variable from one to a hundred and send it for Y. And then it, it makes it in the format of a scatter graph. What about the common out? So there's a line for the PLT if it comment out, yeah. it, it won't run because so it has to. By default, it will run a line. Um, it runs... Actually, it shouldn't. It shouldn't show nothing because we shouldn't. Um, we can test that. <laughs> yeah, nothing shows because we're not plotting nothing. See. Other way around, though, if you comment out the plot dot show, mm -hmm. it'll show it. It'll just not as prettily. Yeah. Cool. No, it's not putting the whole thing in. No, you you kept the plot dot show. They're red now. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show how to plot a, a sign of pseudo a sign of pseudo graph. Uh, that's a tongue twister with NumPy and Matplotlib. So we can import NumPy as np, and then we can import matplotlib.pyplt as plt. So the NumPy and Matplotlib libraries. And then in this case, what, I, what I'm doing right here is I'm setting the default style, style back to classic. So that's what this is doing right here. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to call np.a range one comma Tony. And then I'm going to call np.sign values and then pass in the values and amplitude, which will give us that the sign of studio type of graph when we plot this. So if I were to run this right here, this is what I'll get. Okay. So a very brief introduction to pandas. So pandas is typically used for data manipulation, right? And Statistical data tends to be very messy and pandas help solve many of these type of issues. So the main data structure with pandas is two of them. One is a series, but the main one is a data frame. It's a two-dimensional data structure. And to install pandas, you can do that either through pip, so pip install pandas, or through conda, conda install pandas. And I, I put I put this uh, this uh, notebook on my GitHub, so I'll make sure to post a link to this after the presentation. But nevertheless, this is just a CSV file. It is it is showing the location of the data set that I'm using. So so to import pandas, we can do import pandas as PD. And then we also 
import matplotlib.yplt as well. And then what we're going to do is we want to read in the CSV file. So to do that, we do pd.read underscore CSV file. So this file is located on my desktop. I'm using Windows. So you can see that I've included this R, which means that this is a raw string. And the raw string means that these backslashes are, are included in the actual URL. So once I read in the CSV file, I can call pd.dataframe and then pass in the file that I read in. And then what this does is it converts that file into a data frame, which is great because we then can call various methods with uh, data frames, with uh, pandas. So for example, if we wanted to just return the very first five rows in a, in a data frame, we can call pd.dataframe, and my bad, we call we can create a variable such as first underscore five underscore rows, set it equal to the data frame dot head five. And what this does is it returns the very first five rows in the data frame. And a similar process happens if you want to return the last five rows in a, in a data frame. In this case, you call the, the dot tell function and you pass in the, the parameter of what numbers you want to retrieve. And there's various functions that you can play with with pandas. I've included some of these in the notebooks. You can get you get various statistics about your data by calling your data frame.info. This will return various statistics that you can use to analyze your data frame. You can select data from a specific column by using the square bracket notation and then passing in the name of the column. You can also combine them together to create a new data frame. So in that case, what you do is you pass in two parameters, city and zip. And this returns a new data frame that contains the data from the city column and then the data from the zip column. Can a data frame have more than two dimensions? Um, it's a, it's typically uh yeah it's row is a yeah row times columns so um I don't think there's a I don't think so yeah and you can can you put your GitHub back up there on the screen or do you yeah sure um. So here's the here's the repository right right now. Oops, let's get that out of the way. There we go. And like I said, I'll, I'll make sure to post the link to this after the presentation too. So. Okay, so we can, yeah, we get through that. So, um, so something. Like I mentioned before, that data a lot of times can be messy. So pandas come with these built-in functions that allows us to clean up our data to an extent. So what this what this is doing right here is that you're dropping all of the the rows that contains no values. So when we call data data underscore frame dot drop in a, you're removing all the rows that contains no data in it. So you, you kind of cleanse your, your data set. And then you can also drop all of your columns as well by using the same function, but passing in this, this attribute, axis is equal to one. So in this case, it drops all columns that contain no values. And then there's, there's various statistics that you can do. You could call it the mean function 
or the max function, the min, the median, et cetera. And what these does is it returns th those appropriate data from those columns. So data underscore frame dot mean returns all the columns, returns the mean of all the columns and the data underscore frame dot max returns the highest value in each column. Oh, yeah. And then once you import the CSV file, what you can do is you can plot it. You can plot the CSV files that you import. And by to do that, you just call the name of the file and, then, and dot plot. And then you pass in the values that you want, the X and Y values. So this portion wraps up the, the matplotlib uh, tutorial, matplotlib, numpy, and pandas. And actually, actually a couple more graphs. I forgot about those, okay. So more examples. So to create a pie graph in matplotlib, we go ahead and do the imports. But what we're doing this time is that we're creating two lists. And then what we can do is call plt.py, pass in the data, and then pass in the labels, and then plt.show. And then that's how you create a pie graph in matplotlib. And then for a histogram, we can, as again, it does more or less the same thing, except we're using different functions. So what we're doing here is that we're, we're importing matplotlib, importing numpy, and then we're creating this, this array with numpy. And then what we're doing is that we're going to pass in that array into the plt.hist function, which creates the histogram. We're passing in the data that we want. And then we also pass in the number of bins, which in this case is 21. And then we could do various formatting options if we want. And then what this plus is this histogram right here. Okay. So the next. I'm sorry, what are the AXD values? Let's see. Uh, this one? What's the comment? It adds vertical. Oh, yeah. Um, so this, it pretty much adds, you see this, this red line right here? Mm -hmm. It adds that red line. So you guys will notice that when you uh, check out my Jupyter Notebook, I made sure to add a lot of comments because I wanted the code to be self-documented. So if the code snippets are pretty small, I want you guys to be able to look at it, read the comments, and kind of just have an intuitive sense of what the code is doing. So I've added lots of comments in the code. It hopefully helps you out. And it figures out the beginning and the end points implicitly. I'm sorry? You specify the number of bins, right? Yeah. And it figures out the end points implicitly, the range. Like, huh? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, when, we, when you pass in the number of bins, yeah, it, it figures that out for you automatically, the function. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happens if you change the bins to five. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So, so as you can see, the, the intervals are much wider. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that wraps up the matplotlib portion. So the next data visualization library that I thought makes sense to introduce is Seaborn. Because Seaborn is a library that's built on top of matplotlib. So first thing first, you, what that means is that you can't run Seaborn without first having the matplotlib installed. So you have to install matplotlib because that's a dependency. And then once you do that, you, you can install Seaborn by using pip. So pip install Seaborn or using conda. Conda install Seaborn. So what, so some benefits of Seaborn is that it also includes additional plot types like violin and heat map. And then it also have close integration with the pandas data structure. So what's kind of cool about Seaborn is that you can load various data sets and then you can easily use those data sets to make your plots. 
So you don't have to, like, like we, we've been doing here, you don't have to, for the most part, manually you know, create your data because there's built-in data sets that you can that you can load in a test on. So I think that's a pretty cool feature and it, it integrates nicely with pandas as well. So once you install Seaborn, you can go ahead and import it and then uh, call the Thunder version to see the current version that you have. And then what you do here is you import matplotlib.pyplt as plt, import Seaborn as SNS or as whatever you want. And then what I'm doing right here is I'm loading a data set. So I'm doing sns.load underscore data set. Now I pass it in tips. So it loads a data set for you. And then what we can do is we can call this function, the dot line pot. And then we can set the X and Y values. So in this case, X is equal to day, Y is equal to to the total bill. And then what we're doing right here is we pass in the data set. So data is equal to tips. So what we get in this case is this is how the, the pot looks Yeah. Is that tips a built-in database or is it one that you have? No, it's, uh, it's built-in into uh, Seaborn. And I believe I put a link to, it's, it's on GitHub. It's, it's on a, a GitHub repository for Seaborn and you just load it. So no, it's, it's uh, not an eternal one. Any more questions about, about this code right here in Seymour? So what's the significance of the band? I mean, what's the... Of the, I'm sorry? So how is this different from PLT plot? Oh, well, for one, as you can see, the some people feel like Seaborn is more graphically appeasing compared to matplotlib. Like matplotlib, we could, we could customize the, the, the look, but by default, some people think Seaborn is much more better looking graphics. And two, as we can see, we don't have to, I mean, we could, but you see that we loaded the data set, then, then we plotted it. So Seaborn is, it integrates very nicely with pandas. So in this case, what we're doing is we're loading the tips and then we're plotting. We don't have to create like X, X equal to, you know, whatever, a Y equal to something. We can simply just load the data set and then we can plot it. And boom, we got a nice looking plot right here. Is that, is that converting into a data frame in Dundee or, or tips? This right here? Yeah, yeah. Is that a data frame? Can you print tips so we can see it? Or print type, type of tips? I can, um, yeah, it just, yeah. Let me comment. So this is just a it's just a CSV file. What? Lots of tips, lots of stuff. Excuse me. It's the same thing on the pickup right now because I'm checking the auto pickup. Uh-huh. Uh it's starting to be different. You still you talk about C bonds here, but I don't see any C bonds. Oh here. I see. Okay. Um yeah. I, I mean yeah, I'll I'll update. I'll make sure you guys get that the most recent one. You, you, I I get you guys covered. So yeah, all, all these data sets are on a, a GitHub. I think it's on a Seaborn, or it might be a different maintainer, but it's, it's several of these type of data sets that we can that we can load and that we can test with as well. Where's that band come from? That yeah. band and ask. The, you can see it in, those in, in that uh, total bill. You say, you say where the, the what? The, the band. Um, individualization. Yeah. The blue shade. Oh, um, yeah, I think that's, that, that's just the default. Um, sort of minimum, maximum, uh, yeah, yeah. You just say uh, the default. What is it the value of the tip? Yeah. What are you specify in that plot function, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just specify the x and, and y values. Um, yeah. Okay, so in this case, it's more or less the same thing, but what we're going to do is we're going to load a different data set. So in this case, there's a data, a CSV file for car crashes. So it's car underscore crashes. 
And then instead of doing a line pot, we simply gonna do the bar pot. So cns.barpot, and then we set the x and y values. And then we're going to set the data equal to the file, which is car underscore crashes. So as we can see right here, we get this bar graph and it's, it looks kind of, it looks kind of busy, right? There's too many, there's too many lines together, right? It's, it's kind of data visualization and supposed to makes, supposed to make it easy for us to kind of look at the data and draw instracts from it. This is not really doing that, right? So that's something else to think about. This is, I guess, more statistics, but certain type of graphs are more better suited for other type of type of tasks. So bar graphs, they're, they're great for plotting groups of data, but if you have like, you know, a lot of range of data, it may not be the best option. So we can simply just try something like data plot. And we can see how the graph looks different. So that's that's much more cleaner, right? Compared to the bar graph, which crunched all that data together. The scatter pot gave us a nice distribution. A lot, something a lot more easy to look at. Right. So by the way, that's how you create uh, a scatter pot in uh, Seaborn. Did that question? Or? I just looked it up. Oh. Uh, the thing is the error bands for a confidence interval. Okay. Cool. So that's just it, it just does that. Cool. So that's what it is. So there's a couple of additional plots in Seaborn that's not available in matplotlib. So for example, it's just this cool looking plot right here. It's called a violin plot. And what we can do is we could just go ahead and import our, our modules, uh, load our data set, and then we call sns.violinpot, and then we set x is equal to tips, square bracket, total bill. So we pass in a column from our data set. And this gives us this type of plot, which is a violin plot. And this type of plot is not available in matplotlib. So that's something else to think about as well. Depending on what type of data you want to plot, matplotlib may have that functionality in there, or it may not. It may You may want a specific graph that you want to plot that's not available in matplotlib. So in that case, Seaborn could be a good alternative as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, there, there, there's a lot of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on the documentation, there's a, a lot of various additional plots that you can go through. It's like, um, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot more in Seaborn. As again, Seaborn builds on top of matplotlib and it has a lot, it has a lot more additional functionality. But if you don't know matplotlib, then learning Seaborn would probably be difficult because again, Seaborn is built on top of matplotlib. So some of that functionality is under the cover. So in my opinion, it makes sense to learn matplotlib before trying to learn Seaborn, because trying to learn it in reverse, you probably probably gonna get confused. Okay, so here's a heat map. So what we're doing right here is we're importing um, the matplotlib library, and then we import Seaborn and NumPy, and then all we're doing is we're calling a dot random rn from one to ten, so give us random numbers from one through ten, and then we're just going to call sns dot heat map and then pass in the random numbers as a parameter. And then this is what we get right here. Who the heat map? That's something else that Seaborn is good at. And there's a lot of um, example galleries that you can go through right here, seaborn.pydata.org, examples, slash index.html. A lot of cool stuff. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at another data visualization library, which is Potly. So Potly is a technical computing company in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And they create scientific graphing libraries for a whole host of languages. So not just for Python, they do it for R, they do it for MATLAB, 
they do it for Julia, etc. So, unlike Seaborn, it doesn't require Matplotlib <laughs> as a dependency because this is its own unique code base. So, no dependencies of Matplotlib is required. So, once you install, you can easily install Potly by using pip or by using conda. And here are the instructions on how you do that. Okay. So, the interesting thing about Potly is that it provides several different ways for you to do the same exact thing. So there's there's a couple of ways, like three, there are three different ways that you can you can make a, a bar graph in Potly. Uh, so yeah, um, that's a I assume that's a design issue for the company. Uh, maybe uh, probably depending on the customer feedback, they decide to add additional ways to do this. I'm not 100 percent sure why they have so many different ways to create the same graph. But nevertheless, we're going to look at them and then I'll let you guys decide which version is the most um, straightforward. So once you get Potly installed, you can just do a simple import statement. So potly.graph underscore objects as go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call that go, we call it a constructor figure constructor. And then we're going to pass in data equal go.bar. So this creates a bar graph. And then here are the values that we pass in into the graph. And then fig.show, that will display the graph. So we get something like this, okay? But like I said, there's a couple more different ways that we can do this. So in this case, we can import potly.io as PIO. And then what we have here is a data structure and we have like a dictionary and like a JSON like type of syntax. And then what you can do here is you can just pass in um, include the variables of the data that you want. So we're specifying the type of graph, which is bar. Uh, we specify the X and Y values, and then the layout, which help us to display the text that appears in the graph, et cetera. And then to show the graph, we do PIO.show. Then we pass in this data right here, fig. So as we can see, we too get a bar graph right here. And then last but not least, actually that's the thing. So just out of curiosity, which which version do y'all prefer to create a bar graph with Potly? Do you think this syntax is more straightforward or you think that this one right here is more straightforward? Yeah. Second one. Second one? You, you, you said first? Oh, okay, just a quick survey, that's all. Okay. So there's also another module in Potly called Potly.express. And this too has some data sets that we can extract. So in this case, we import Potly.express as PX. And then we call this right here, the px.data.gapminer.query. And then what we want is the country, which in this case is Kenya. And then what we can do is we can plot the line graph right here by passing that data and then specifying the X and Y parameters along with the title. So when we do that, we get this right here. So here's something that data visualization can be very good at. See that in, in the 1960, the, the life expectancy for Kenyans were pretty low, right? And then it, it steadily, steadily went up, reached its highest about here, and then had a start, had a start of decline in the, in the 2000s, and then slightly trending back up. So that's something that we can quickly analyze with data, right? We can we can see that we can see that that trend going up and going down, and perhaps we could do deeper analysis to try to extract insights for why. In the case that's that's the case, right? So there's something to think about. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a scatter graph. So, so before yeah. Before you query the data again, like the gap monitor. Oh sure. Um, get that data. So we call once we import uh, from this module, potly.express as PK. We have to call it the pk.data. 
function dot dot gap finder dot dot query, and then we pass in the country that we want. And it, they have various countries in here, so it has pretty much all the countries that you want. And we, we can we we can two plot them and see how the life expectancies have changed over over time. We can even do something more interesting and maybe compare many different countries and and kind of like juxtapose them, right? It's a lot of different approaches that we can take with this. But yeah, it, how we get the data is, is this is this snippet, this line of code right here. And you can pass in different countries as well to test it. Okay, so a simple scatter plot. So this is one way that you could create a scatter plot and plotly, we're gonna import the plotly.graph objects as go. So this is this is the, the way that I, I tend to find a little bit more easier to create graphs with plotly. I'm using uh, plotly.graph underscore objects. We're gonna import numpy and then we're gonna randomly generate values from one to 10. And then from here, we're going to plot the scatter graph. And then we'll pass in the X values and Y values. So what it's doing is passing in X and then from Y is raising is cubing it. This is what the double asterisk means in Python. And then we're going to update the graph and then pass in the parameters of title, X axis, and Y axis. And then we can plot it get a nice looking graph like this. So the simple sky graph. Okay. So this is more or less similar stuff that we, I, I showed a similar type of pot like this. So I'm just gonna move past this. It just shows how to implement this and, and potly. I believe when I showed this, it was for matplotlib. But this this is virtually the same thing. But instead of doing the sine of pseudo, it's, it's doing a cosine. So it's, it's plotting a cosine instead of the sine graph. So this is this is how you how you would do that in Potly. So that's something else I like to recommend to get more familiar with the, these data visualization packages. To go ahead and create a couple plots in one graph, like like Matplotlib, and then go ahead and try to replicate something similar in a different data visualization library to see how the, the syntax kind of changes, to see which one that you feel more comfortable with doing and to kind of get a grasp of the, the different features of the various type of graphs. Okay, so a pie graph, right? So we're importing plotly.graph underscore objects as go. We create a label which is land and water. This is a very tiny pie graph because as you see, it's only two, two, you know, two variables we're dealing with, this land and water. And then what we can do is we, we call it go.figure and then we pass into that data is equal to square bracket go.pi. We pass in the labels, which defines the labels, which is water and land. And then we pass in the values, which give us the, the numbers. And then we do fig that show, and then the graph show up here. So that's how you plot a pie graph in Potly. Okay. So another type of data visualization library. This one is Bokeh. It's an interactive data visualization library for monitoring web browsers. So what's really cool about this one is that it's easy to make interactive plots specific for the web. So I'll show you guys how to create a simple plot. And when we do so, it will generate a HTML file. And then we can, it will, it will appear in the browser and then we can um, you know, do things with it because it'd be interactive. We can zoom in and zoom out or we can you know, make some modifications to the graph. So this one, I think it's pretty cool. And it's great for making interactive plots, for doing dashboards, and for creating data apps. And here's the documentation right here. So here's a simple scatter plot in Bokeh. So what we can do is we import bokeh.plotting 
and then we can import specific functions from that module. So in this case, I want to import figure, output underscore file, and then show. So when I call out output underscore file, and then pass in line.html, what that does is it means that this is going to be the file that's, that's displayed to the user as an HTML file at the end. So this is the HTML file. That's, that's all that does. What we're going to do from after that is we're going to pass in the parameters that we want for the dimensions of the graph. So this means that the width is 400 pixels and the height is 400 pixels. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to p.circle. So what this does is the, the final graph that's rendered is going to is going to include circles. And these are the value, these are the x and y values for these circles. And then we can also modify the size. We can also modify the, the color. And we can also modify the alpha, which is like the uh, the transparency. And then we display the graph. So I'm going to run this right now. And then as you can see, a new browser pops up. And this is pretty cool because this is an HTML file and it's interactive. We can, we can do things with it. So every time you, you plot these type of graphs, you get that, you get like an HTML output file. Now I need to get back to Jupyter Notebooks. What? That was unexpected. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Let me let me just close some of this stuff. I think it's right here. Gosh, that's so annoying. It's not letting me do that. Uh, control. What? My Jupyter notebook file just disappeared out of blue. Okay. Uh, so one second. I still was not anticipating this. Oh, that's worth a shot. So history. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna exit out of this and just go back to what? Okay, so what is happening? Do you want to have any questions that I can uh, answer for you while while, while I'm tweaking this? Anything that I've done before that you guys want me to uh, re-explain? Libraries can do um, sync charts. Oh, I'm sorry. Sinky. 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 Uh, or uh, maybe other like type of fancy stuff like the seaborn. The seaborn can do. You talk about um. You talk about um, bouquet. bouquet? Um. You talk about the bouquet library. You asking if, if it could do. Um, I'm talking about like which libraries can do uh, those type of fancy stuff. Oh, uh, you probably want seaborn. Okay. Seaborn does really fancy stuff. Um, and then also a bouquet with bouquet you can do fancy stuff as well. Which I like to get to if I ever get back to my computer. So is this okay thing that you got here? Is this got a JavaScript line? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a front end library. So you use a JavaScript. That's why we can generate the HTML file. Keep your questions coming, guys. While I fix this, this is I'm not sure what is happening. This is weird. Can you go back to the graph and just escape from it? It'll bring you back. Yeah, it goes up. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a trap here. 
not sure what's happening. This is this is weird. I will not anticipate this. Uh, gosh. This Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you on Windows. Okay, so um, it's Explorer. Yes. So you can actually bring up Task Manager and kill, kill the Explorer if you want to choose to do that. Uh, I believe actually there's actually, um, if you want to troubleshoot, go in, go into there if, if you want to save what you have, but you want to not kill that process if that's what you want. Yeah. I think actually there's, there's I don't think you have killed it yet, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I might have to go uh, out, uh, stop share because this. I can't. I can't even get to my uh, command prompt. Is that that cool? Because I, I don't want to. You try the second icon, the, the maximize icon. You on, the, on that that plot, the second one is like the yeah this plot. Yeah, this not going. Yeah. Running. Yeah, you. Okay, so I, I will not run Bokeh again, but I'll just go through some of the code. Okay, um, I should do live stream, man. I feel bad about doing that. So you would stop working on Bokeh then ever? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, just, just in this scenario, man, in this specific scenario. Um, um, I wasted too much time. So, okay. Um, so yeah, that's how you plot a, a scatter graph and, and bouquet. And what's kind of cool is that I'm kind of kind of paranoid to run this again, but they have various different type of plots that you can do. So for example, you do a, a single line graph and what's, you can also do a step. So what this does is it creates a graph that has intervals. So when X is one and Y is 10, and then X is two and then Y is 7.5, it creates like a, a little conti continuous interval in between the last two variables. So I want to show you guys this, but um, I don't think it's a good idea. So um, you just got to, okay. Yeah, probably not, but it, it, it shows you these, these various Plots, like I said, that you can you can plot these line intervals, and you probably have to see it though in order to know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Let me see what happens. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. It has this type of uh, put. Gosh, and I lost my Jupyter notebook again. Yeah, it's running, but for some I have a different. I have, oh, there we go. So yeah, this is how that particular uh, graph would, when you we use the line graph. Gosh. Oh, what's that? Yeah, it won't let me escape. Okay, uh, so yeah, no more, no more bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you switch to Chrome, you switch to Chrome and then it'll work. What, what does the colorful oh. circle thing do? Um, let's see. Oh, I'll get back to your question once I get pull that Jupyter notebook. It goes to the bouquet documentation. Okay, so you guys, like I said, the source code will be on 
Jupyter notebook. So you guys could go through this and run it yourself. But what I like about Bouquet is that it allows you to make these interactive web, web plots. So if you have some plots that you want to share on the internet, Bouquet makes it very easy for you to do that. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop there for Bouquet. Uh, next one is Altair. So this is a declarative statistical visualization library written for Python. And it is based on a language called Vega underscore datasets. I mean Vega. Um, it's, it's based on uh, Vega and Vega Lite, which is like a, a API that allows you to create a various statistical type of software. So that means that Altair it includes that that's a dependency. In order to get it to run, you also must install uh, the Vega and, and the Vega underscore data sets. So the good news is that when you do pip install or conda install, all the dependencies will automatically be installed for you. And as again, you can import it and then call the underscore version to, to confirm that everything is up and running. Okay, so as again, this is more or less similar stuff that we saw before. Um, I just wanna show you how to do it in different data visualization library. So uh, we're importing Altair, we're importing NumPy, and we're also importing Pandas. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna call NumPy.a range from one, um, 100, and then we're gonna create a, a data frame, and then we'll map it to the X and Y values. Sure. Okay, uh, let's see. Is it good? Oh. Is it is it fine? Okay, cool. Okay. So what we're doing here is we just uh, create the X and Y values. And then we're gonna we're gonna plot it by using the dot by using chart. And then we're gonna pass in the source, which is the data frame that we which is the dictionary that we created that has the X and Y mappings. Thank you. And then when we run this, this is how the um, this is what we get. So this in this case a, a sign of pseudo graph. Um, syntax is a lot different, I'll say, compared to matplotlib or the other libraries. It's, it has a nice looking output. I think the graphics look pretty clean and sleek as well. As again, you, you, get to, you get to import these data sets. So when you install Altair, like I said, that the Vega is a dependency and the Vega comes with various data sets that you can use. So, what we're going to do here is we're again going to import Altair. And then from Vega underscore data sets, we're going to import data. And in this case, we want to get some various stats on cars. And then what we're going to do is we want to compare the horsepower of cars versus the miles per gallon. We want to see like, you know, if there's a correlation, if the more horsepower a car have, um, does it get less miles, miles per, per gallon or does it get more? And then here are some parameters that we can pass to help special help describe a graph. So when we run this, we get this cluster of data right here. And similar to Seaborn, we can we can load various data sets with, with Altair. That's a benefit of using it. What's the tool for uh, which, uh, which, what? Tooltip. Tooltip? Um, oh, this right here? The fourth argument to the chart call. Uh, I'm over one of the points. Uh, which one? There you go. Like that. A little bit to the right. Oh. Oh, it just, it just, it just what the, what the data points are at, at that particular portion of the graph. So it helps you to zoom in on it. Instead of just instead of just looking at it, you can hoover over it and it tells you that specific data. So it tells you horsepower is 110 and miles per gallon is 21 at that particular 
I'm pointing it apart. What's that model of that getting 47 miles per gallon over the very top? Let's see. Oops. Mm -hmm. So you said, you said miles per gallon? No, no, just that, the dot. I was just curious. The, the, oh. The dot. Yeah. The highest dot. The highest dot on the plot. I thought about this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just want to see that. Okay. okay. No mind. Thanks. Yeah, okay. no problem. Okay, so another graph, a bar graph. So that's again, we, we do our import statements. We need Altair, we need the data sets. Then what we want is we want, we want to do various statistics on, on wheat. So we're calling this various data set. That's what that does. And then we we plot our graph, we pass in the X and Y variables. And then we can pass in various values as well. And then when we plot this, as we can see, we have these nice sequence of bar graphs we have this random orange graph, orange bar right here. And we, what we wanted was that once the year is 1810, then uh, the value at that particular bar would be equal to orange. We change the color. So we, we wanted to like highlight a particular year. I think we're running out of time. We, we wanted to highlight a particular year. So that what this does, uh, it allows you to highlight a bar on your graph so that it stands out. Okay. Um, so that wraps up this uh, workshop. Hope you guys learn a lot of different data visualization libraries. And uh, I guess I'll pass it back to you guys if you, uh, so that for questions. Or, okay. Um, uh, this, this last one uh, up here. Uh -huh. If the graphs that it create are they like SVGs that you could copy and put on a web page? Um, only for bouquet because that one is specifically built for that, pr that purpose. And as we saw during the technical difficulties, when I ran that, it created that HTML file. Um, so bouquet, if you want to put something on a web, I'll definitely recommend bouquet. Uh, there may be a way to do it with the other graphs, but um, okay, it is written for that purpose. Yeah. That's a good question. I have, to, I have to check out some uh, GitHub stats, but I'll probably, off the top of my head, I'll say matpotlib just because it was, it was one of the oldest ones. So it has that mind share in the market. Um, the initial release was back in 2003. It has a massive code base. So I'll say matpotlib, but um, yeah, I have to probably verify some uh, GitHub stats uh, to kind of, you know, 100% definitively um, say yes, but I'll probably say matpotlib. Uh, Seaborn is, is highly popular as well. So yeah. Anymore? Better. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Cool. Hope you guys learned something. And uh, thank you guys for showing up on Friday. And uh, I'll update, I'll update the Jupyter notebook and I'll make sure to post it this weekend. So I got you guys covered. Don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll post it on the meetup. That, that's the easy way to do it. To post it on the meetup link or somewhere. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh huh? Yes. Yeah, I'll do it this weekend. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just starting out with data huh? visualization. Okay. So 